Hey, welcome back to Bridal Sewing Techniques, and today we're going to talk about how to hand paint a beautiful geode and a gate accent wall for your sewing studio. Now, why in the world do you need an accent wall, and why is this not a sewing tutorial? Well, as you know, on this channel, we also focus on business aspects and having an accent wall is super powerful for your branding. Everyone is going to notice and recognize your after pictures because they're always taken in front of the same wall. It's going to give you beautiful consistency across your social media and your website. Now, if you happen to land on this video just because you want to learn to make this accent wall and you don't sew at all, that's all right. Don't be scared. We're not going to go into sewing today. And if you're used to sewing and not used to painting and you feel really intimidated, go ahead and watch this. I think you're going to find that this is a super easy, easy peasy wall to do. Um, that's why I wanted to introduce it to you. And it's also super trendy right now. It's very, very beautiful. Here we go. Are you someone who has experience with a mix of sewing, but is looking to get into the bridal niche? This channel is for you. I painted this wall for the backdrop of my e-courses that are going to start rolling out in 2019. I'll put some information about that down below, but basically I just recorded the process so that I could share it with you. So what you're going to first want to do is understand the stones that you're painting. Here is a piece of wall art that I bought and I'm going to reference that. Here is just a basic Google search on geodes. You can see geodes are a little different because they're rocks that are hollow on the insides and they have that crystal crust on the inside or on some type of edge. So you're going to want to look those up online. Um, these are agate stones. Agate stones, these are the slices. They're a little different from the geodes because um, they don't always have that crystal edge that the geode has. It doesn't have to be a hollow rock. The other idea is that when you hold them up to light, they are semi-translucent. Um, so basically, for what we're painting, we can mostly use geode and a gate interchangeably um, because we're getting both looks on this wall. So that wasn't a gate stone in the light. You could see the difference. This is an amethyst stone, which is kind of like a geode, and so is this. See that little crystally. y uh, circular part. This isn't a gate that kind of almost looks like it wanted to be a geode in the middle. Um, so you can see how they kind of overlap a little bit. But I basically got some sample stones so I could handle them. I also have that wall art so I can reference how does it look when, uh, when you paint it. Now here is the wall that we're going to do. And here's the consistency of the paint that we are going for. Super sloshy, okay? So I'm going to show you things like that all along the way so you don't have questions. If you do have additional questions that I didn't think to mention, please leave them down below. Now, these are just Waverly chalk paints. I'll link to them, but I got them at my local Walmart. And you can pick any color palette that you want. Um, this is just the color palette that I wanted. And uh, this, again, is the consistency. I wanted to stir it so you can see. When I first start out, it's very, very watery. So what I've done is I've just kind of sketched out big circles and swirls and lines on my wall. And you can make your pattern bigger or smaller, depending on you know the level of impact and the level of detail that you want. But basically, I'm just going to brush on this super thin, watered down chalk paint. And it really doesn't matter the shapes, um, but I do, of course, like I said, I reference the stones. Basically, you're going to make kind of a wobbly, circular-ish kind of shape, um, and then you're going to do like some concentric lines around it. And so you can paint with the broad side of the sponge brush. And then when you go around the edge, just turn it to the side and use the skinny side. And I usually wobble it back and forth. And that's going to give you the variation of the skinny, the thick, the skinny, the thick as you go around and just make it look super organic. Um, the organic nature of this sketching, here I am laying a second color on, the organic layer of this is what makes this wall so easy to paint. Um, it's you don't have to do straight lines. My old art teacher used to say that. I just loved her. She'd say people would say, well, I can't paint or draw because I can't even draw a straight line. And she'd say, oh, well, you're in luck. There's not straight lines in nature usually. 
So here we go, super organic and wobbly. You can do lots of concentric lines around it or fewer. I've got two colors on the wall now. Now, you can blend this any way that you want and use any type of colors you want. Some people prefer to have a separate solo cup for each color so they can go back and dip back in it if they need to. I like to start with one color and let it change as I work. So I just keep adding to it. So there I just added the hazelnut into my original blush tones, um, add it in, add a little more water, and then that way each color still has a basic agreement with the colors before. That's why I do that. But I understand why people would want separate cups. So here I am layering on my third color, and you can see it's dripping a little bit. Um, the reason why I wanted to do this also is because most of the tutorials on YouTube I've found um, people are doing more like pouring or they're painting on a flat horizontal surface, not a vertical wall, and then they're mounting it after. Um, so on a vertical wall, of course, you're going to deal with drips when you're dealing with thin paint. The great thing about this is, oh, and you can see I pulled my baseboards off before we started here. The great thing about this is that you're gonna layer so much that you can just come back and, and sweep back over those drips while they're still wet and just make sure that when you work over them, um, you just kind of work those in and cover them later. So here we are, this is maybe like, I don't know, a fourth of the way through. And I'm working over some drips now. Again, they're not gonna be a problem in the end, so don't panic too much, but you wanna pay attention when they come up so you can kind of you know, even them out a little bit. Now, here's uh, how I got lots of veining, is I just cut some notches into this sponge brush, and that's going to give you a lot of veining that works side by side. You don't wanna notch this evenly, because remember, we're going for something really organic and rough and free flowing. So we're gonna pull these out. And this veining is gonna be done with the full thickness of the chalk paint. This kind of reminds me of Neapolitan ice cream. It doesn't look like it on the wall though, you'll see. <laughs> it looks like I'm playing in ice cream. So I'm gonna start to the side and then twist my brush so that it's wider. That way you don't start with like this line of of paint you know you want to start with a skinny little line not this straight across look and i'm going to kind of pick up where the paint wore off go side by side get lots of wiggles in there and here's that painting that i'm referencing see what i'm going for it really helps guys when you go to do an accent wall to be able to reference um, the original thing in nature and then also to be able to reference how another artist has kind of made that look. Whoa, isn't that fun? All that hazelnut, it's really starting to pop. So I've added some teal, as you can see, brushed in. I forget the color, I'll have the color names down below. Now these colors are really gonna make it pop. I'm using a stiff bristle brush. This is a craft brush, not your soft little nylon one, but something nice and stiff because we're gonna put the streaks in and then we're gonna blend them by scrubbing with what's called a dry brush. So this paint is not wet. We're still working with the thicker paint just like we did when we did the veining with the sponge brush. And uh, don't panic when you see me, you know, skip part of the process and you're like, whoa, there's an extra color or whatever. It's all the same exact process. I made sure to include every technique that I used on here. So there's nothing secret in here. Here's me blending in with that dry brush. These yellows and golds and mustards um, and the aqua color, that's what's really going to make these pop. And uh, you can use your accent wall, you can do it in colors that really kind of fade and they're kind of quiet, or you can get really, really funky with it. So just make sure when you're picking out your colors in the store, just hold them all together, the bottles, and blur your eyes and make sure the colors all agree. And here's some more of that beautiful mustard color. 
we're going to add some gilding to this wall guys and that's really going to um, agree with the wall since we have the gold and yellow painted in so here's all of our marvelous colors we've layered and layered and layered and you can just keep on layering the more layers the more depth you're going to get there's that fiery stripe and you can always just drop your paintbrush in your paint that that's always a lovely little thing to do <laughs> And then you have to clean up. Well, so here is the uh, gold leaf. I've got some silver, some yellow gold, and then some coppery rose gold. That's the one we're actually going to use. Here's mica flakes. This is what's really going to make your wall have that geode look. This is adhesive size, or we call it sizing. This is basically like a very clear, thin glue that you paint on, and that's going to have the gilding stick to it the gold leaf. Now you can drop a little bit of pigment down in here, say like a yellow or rose gold, so that you can see where you've painted it. Um, I don't normally do that uh, because I don't want to disrupt the stickiness of it by adding pigment. It could kind of reduce the stickiness. So I just paint it on and then I'll show you in a minute. I just kind of duck down and look at it from an angle and you'll see the sheen where it is. There you go. Can you see it? Just look at it at an angle. It's gonna pop in just a second. Yep, yep. See that gloss? That is the sizing. So that's what you're gonna do. You're gonna kind of look at it at an angle. I like to slightly crumple. It doesn't take much. I like to slightly wrinkle my um, gold leaf. I don't like it to go on super smooth and flat. I like it kind of wrinkly um, because what rock is going to have super smooth flat? metal in it it's not going to happen um, so you'll find when you look at um, sometimes you see like the cheese serving platters now like anthropology or wherever um, a lot of them are marble or a gate stone and they've gilded the edges it's a very rough look to the edge it's so pretty that texture really helps so I'm just going along some of my more dominant veins with the sizing and adding the gilding to it. Now you can add more sizing than you end up using. You can see I'm kind of putting these in little circular pieces, almost like coins or something on here. And then I'm rubbing them in flat and really kind of scrubbing them. But if you get to a point where you're like, wow, this is the perfect amount of gold. I don't want to add more, but you still have more sizing on the wall. Don't worry about it. We're not going to leave your wall sticky. We're also not going to gloss over the whole wall. Um, I used to do decorative painting years ago in the dark ages, and um, it was very common for decorative painters to do a clear gloss over the entire wall or wax the wall. We're not going to do that. To make this super dynamic, we need the chalk. So we're going to do the chalk and then stripes of gloss. Now this is mica, and I'm going to kind of give you a heads up of how we're going to put this on the wall. This is that flat flaky stone that you sometimes find at the lake. Um, so I bought this online too, but I put that craft glue on it, the clear craft glue, and I've glued it to my wall. <laughs> and here is the clear gloss. I love Verathane, um, the clear high gloss. It's actually for like floors and stuff, but this is my personal favorite gloss. A lot of people put Mod Podge on the wall. Um, Verathane is just my personal favorite, so do whatever you want. But basically, I'm going to follow the, the dominant veins again um, with the gloss. I'm going to really put it on thick where I've put my gold and that textured mica because you really want to seal that mica into the wall. So I'm going to go over it really kind of dab, dab, sponge, sponge, dig under a little bit and really get it in there for the veins and then I'm going to go back over and paint veins uh, with the gloss. So what happens is when you see this wall from an angle, the veins are going to sparkle. You're going to get that, that gloss shine only in these natural veiny shapes. Um, and so the chalk paint is going to be the relief for that gloss that's going to pop. And you ought to see people when they see this wall, they get it, they squat and look at it from all different angles. 
because um, it's just so much fun how much the gloss sparkles in the veins and that's what really gives you a lot of your impact um, now you can also spring from this change your colors a little bit and do a pour with the with the gilding on say accent tables or you know any old wood piece of furniture you have in your studio and that's really going to tie things together for you I'm not going into that for this tutorial but I just wanted to show you that so here's the finished product and I am going to hang a little macrame wall hanging from the ceiling to cover the thermostat like you know these heat and air guys they just don't think about accent walls do they but um, here's the finished product and uh, we're gonna just push everything out of the way when we film the e-courses so uh, obviously I've blurred out the distractions so you can see this wall I hope that this has helped you please leave questions in the comments section down below I'd be happy to help you also share any ideas that you have remember to keep it nice and take a second to hit that like button. It means so much and it only takes a second. Please do it, please, please. Thank you so much. And if you're new to my channel, stay tuned. I'm getting ready to run my channel trailer so you can see what this is all about. I know what you're looking for. You've been sewing for years, but you wanna get into full-time bridal sewing. But there's something missing. You're missing the backroom secrets, the industry tips and tricks. The tools, the sources, the techniques that give you the speed and the accuracy that the industry demands. You have found it.